and we're gonna see how we can activate different modules remember when we ran help command we have seen we have many modules over here and we're gonna start with the net.prop and net.recon of course recon stands for reconnaissance and they work together because we need to probe all the network we need to poke all the network devices we need to send them pings in order to recon in order to uh, gather information and um, match the mac addresses with the ip addresses so if you write help net.prop it will show you the help documentation regarding net.prop so if you want to get some help for other modules you can write this help and module name okay it will just give you the documentation and always you can uh, run a module by saying that net.prob on net.prob off so if you're running net.sniff for example you can just write net.sniff on and net.sniff off in order to turn it off so it's pretty easy to use better cap and it's very self-explanatory if you just write help and module name as you can see over here we also have some parameters and we're gonna look at the parameters in many modules but in this case for the probing I don't think we need to change anything okay you just have to write net.prob on and it will just start probing the network and here you go it already started the probing and it already found the endpoints detected and um, they actually are matched with the MAC addresses as you can see we already found the windows which is 10026 in my case so rather than using net discover we can just write net.prop on and it will just find the thing for us great now um, as you can see it all, all also shows the MS Edge Win 10 which is the computer name in my case okay and it can give us clues in order to understand whether we are targeting a phone whether we are targeting a computer and something like that because uh, everybody names their phones something like Attil's iPhone so Jack's computer um, something like that and uh, we can understand the targets in a better way when we use this net.prob so if I run help right now as you can see uh, net.recon is all already running okay we didn't start it but net.prob um, also uh, depends on the net.recon so it uh, started net.recon for us so when you write net.prob on you will see that net.recon is also running okay and it's normal and if we take a look at the net.recon uh, we don't have to do anything okay uh, we just have to know something uh, some comment in order to see a table like net discover so let me show you what I mean if I write help dot net dot help net dot recon I can see how to turn recon on net, turn recon off um, but we don't have to do that net dot prop already started it for us but here you go we have net dot clear and net dot show that is what I'm talking about so it says that shows the cache host list so this cache uh, the cache of host list the list that we have gathered from the net.prop so if you run net.show you will see a net discover like table where you will find the IP and make pairings and also the name of the computers or name of the devices as well here you go so this is what they mean by saying Swiss army knife of uh, man in the middle Swiss army knife of penetration test for Wi-Fi and uh, as you can see uh, we can gather the information and show it to ourselves in like a second um, by using the same tool always right now uh, after we are done with this after we um, establish our target such as 10026 in this case which is the windows then we're just gonna go ahead and launch an attack using the same tool and also we're gonna sniff the attack we're gonna see the credentials with the same tool as well so if you run help you will see all the modules that is not running um, and uh, ARP spoof is one of them so of course we're gonna go into the ARP spoof by uh, saying help ARP.spoof here you go 
So right now we are seeing the documentation for ARP, ARP spoofing and it's very easy ARP.spoof on and ARP.spoof off but also it has this ARP.ban on which is the, the authentication thing that we have seen before right so it can start the ARP spoofer in ban mode so that um, the target's connectivity will not work so rather than using uh, the airplay and uh, the other tools that we have seen in the previous sections you can go ahead and use this arp.pen if you want okay but we're not here for that right Be because we're gonna go ahead and use arp.spoofing on but um, as you might imagine uh, we're not just going to say arp.spoof on or arp.ban on in this case, okay? We're just going to have to take a look at the parameters this time because we haven't even specified a target, right? So rather than just saying arp.spoof on, we're going to have to see how to change parameters this time. So if we look at parameters, uh, we have arp.spoof.targets, for example. At least we have to change that. But along with that, we have many things over here, so I believe we're going to have to take a look at each of those so that we can understand it in a better way. So duplex. So this full duplex thing is very important. As you can see, it says that if it is true, both the targets and the gateway will be attacked. And that is what we were doing anyway, right? But the default value for this is false. So we're going to have to make sure that uh, we change full duplex from false to true. Otherwise, it will only attack the target, not the router. So why would anyone do that, right? Because if we just attack the target, we can get the request, but we wouldn't be able to see the response from the router, right? So sometimes the routers have kind of protection mechanisms. Um, most of the time they don't work, but if it works, uh, it may actually detect this attack and maybe kick us out of that um, network. And then maybe we may want to start with full duplex false in order to understand if everything is working well. Um, but we're not going to do that. Just keep in mind full duplex has to be true in order for you to leverage the full power of man in the middle okay so we're gonna change this to be true and um, changing the parameters is easy in better cap so if you learn this syntax you're gonna use it in every occasion so no worries we're gonna change it i'm gonna show you how to do that but uh, it's essential for you to understand what full duplex is doing. Great, now if this is true, both the targets and gateway will be attacked. So we're going to make it true. And for the ARP spoof internal, so it says that if it is true, the local connections among computers of the network will be spoofed. Otherwise, only connections going and coming from external network. So, um, this this is default uh, false by default by the way uh, we can make this true but uh, it's not going to affect us very much because i don't even want to know what's going on inside of the local network i'm interested in stealing the passwords or usernames of the user so i'm just gonna focus on the external network so what i would suggest to just leave it false and uh, maybe if it doesn't work or if it causes some problems, maybe we can just change it to be true. So the skip restarting, um, as you can see, if it's set to true, target's ARP cache won't be restored when spoofing is stopped. So default is false and I suggest ke keeping it false because we want targets to be um, re-ARPed, okay, as we have done in the ARP spoofing tool. So if we change it to true, it won't be re arped re-cached, so it may cause problems in the target and they can understand that they are under attack. So I'd suggest just keep it that way. Of course, for the targets, we can specify as many targets as we want. We can just specify one target or with a common separated list, we can specify multiple targets. Okay. And uh, the whitelist is 
easy um, if you want somebody to just be immune to our attacks like not attack those kind of people uh, or those kind of IPs you can just give it to the whitelist and they won't be ARP spoofed okay but the main thing we we're gonna have to change the full duplex and we're gonna have to change the targets their cap and also launch an ARP spoofing attack so first of all we want this ARP spoof full duplex to be true okay don't forget that and in order to do that we just use one syntax and we use that in every occasion which is this set and the parameter name which is arp.spoof.fullduplex and then the value of the parameter that we want it to be happening like set arp spoof full duplex true okay so we're just gonna use it for every occasion like if I want to change the targets, then again, I'm just going to use the same thing. If I want to change this internal, then I'm just going to use the same thing. Okay. So let's do that. For example, for internal, I'm just going to make it true as well. Okay. Um, as I said before, it won't hurt. It wouldn't hurt. It doesn't matter in this case, uh, but you can make it true or false. Um, if it causes any problems, you can always just run this. Okay. Make it false. So anyway, this is not very important, but the targets um, is very important, okay? I'm not gonna just uh, do anything with the skip restoring thing because I want to be re-arping the people uh, when I cancel the attack. But for the targets, of course, we want to give 10026 and you're gonna have to give yours own uh, in your case, okay? So if I want, I can just add something like that with comma, but in this case, I don't want it okay so 10026 for me and then for whitelist i don't want anything and i believe this is okay so i can just run arp spoof on now it started arp spoofing and in order to check this in order to verify this i'm just gonna go ahead to windows and run cmd okay and in the cmd obviously i'm just gonna go with arp dash a to see if my MAC address is the uh, same with the router. Here you go. It's, it's exactly the same thing, right? So Kali and the router has the same address, which means that I'm man in the middle. Great, now this, this is working. Now, uh, we haven't used NetDiscover, we haven't used ARP spoof, and here you go. We still got this thing working, right? And here you go. This ARP spoof is now working as well. So the next thing should um, be to sniff, okay? The sniffing refers to um, listening for packets and sniffing is a general term in the cybersecurity, by the way. Uh, if you say I'm sniffing this, it means that you probably trying to gather information from where you're not supposed to be gathering, okay? So let me just say help net.sniff and here you go. So this has a lot of parameters, but most of the time you're just going to be fine with the default. So I'm not going to change anything over here. Um, as you can see, all you got to do is just say net.sniff on or net.sniff on. Um, it happens that it has a fuzzing uh, module over here as well. So that it, it, it starts fuzzing every sniff packet containing the uh, layers. But we don't need that in this case. Uh, we just need the sniffer to see uh, if we can gather around some important information from the user. Now I executed this net.sniff on. If I run help, I see that net.sniff is running. Now what we're gonna do, we're gonna just go ahead to the victim machine and go into the internet, right? And we will see that if we can actually gather information um, in the Kali Linux site. So I'm just gonna go to Google and then maybe you can uh, wander around a little bit but eventually I'm gonna go ahead to unicornitems.com which is an HTTP site remember. So this is where we try to find the username and password uh, in the Wireshark lecture as well. So I'm gonna go ahead to my account and give a username and a password later on test 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 this time and password you can just go ahead with one two three four five six and try to log in 
If you log in, uh, you will obviously get an incorrect username or password error. But again, this has been posted to the server. So it means that we should get it. So if I scroll up a little bit, you can see that I'm still getting a lot of packets. Uh, I'm still seeing some post uh, packets and post or get packets over here, but not as much as we see in the Wireshark, right? So we still get many things, okay? You shouldn't be able to just see it instantaneously, but again, uh, we found it. I just scrolled up a little bit and here you go. I see the username and the password. So just this better cap tries to gather information of which matters you to most okay and uh, you can always search for username and password uh, once you gather all these packets easily in the terminal and it's much better um, if you compare it with Wireshark for this purpose of, of course Wireshark is a fabulous tool but in this case better cap does a very great job to filter out the um, parameters or filter out the packets that we need to see over here and of course, uh, we gathered this information because this was an HTTP website, not an HTTPS website. Uh, if it was an HTTPS website, then it would be encrypted and it would be not possible for us to see the username and password. And we're going to see how to handle with that kind of situation in the next lecture. Don't worry about it. But right now you have seen that um, like using the Wireshark and using the um, other things inside of uh, the Kali Linux like ARP spoofing and others um, is uh, actually achievable using better cap. Okay. So here you go. For example, I went to google.com, here you go, we see that people, um, the victim actually uh, has gone to google.com and let me search for myself, for example, okay, I search for myself, you can search for yourself and um, as you can see in the Kali Linux, I don't see that, right? I don't know what uh, the user, what the victim is searching for, I know he is in Google, but I don't know the content of it, 